How's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Jose, a.k.a. the YC Geek, a.k.a. TNG, a.k.a. your Elden Lord. Even the Elden Lord of those who enjoyed Love and Thunder. I'm a magnanimous Elden Lord, a.k.a. the guy who is here with something a little different. I want to talk about a project. A project that some of you may know of, some of you may not. But this project, by the time of this video's release, is promising to shake up the very core of American comics. I'm talking about Eric July's Ripaverse. Now, Eric July, who also goes by the handle of Young Ripa 59, is a musician. He's a uh, political commentator, a streamer, a content creator. He's, he does a lot. He does a lot. He's honestly a renaissance man. But my favorite videos by Eric have always been his comic book commentary. Now, I wish I had the grasp of lore and knowledge that, uh, that Eric and Gary from Nerd Rotic have. Like they can see a comic and they tell you like the artist or the writer just by the style. They'll know like the exact issues and lines. I don't have knowledge like that. Um, I can't, I can't retain it the same way that they do, but I, I wish I did. I wish I did. Cause it reminds me of like when my friends who are big into sports, they'll like recite like stats from players who haven't been around for years. Like my buddy, Brian, he could tell you like how many home runs some dude from the Yankees back in like 76 or some crap, something like that. Like he, they, they, they're crazy when they cite these numbers. I'm like, the hell are you talking about but anyway eric has been around for a long time and he's been very very vocal about the disastrous state that the american comics are in okay and i've told all of you this too i told all of you this too it's not it's not our stance on how bad the american comic book industry is is uh, not just rather not just comic book industry in america but entertainment as a whole it's not a point it's not just some random point that we make it's it's frankly backed by numbers especially in the case of comics because manga has been killing it here for years and and i'm not saying that as like if it's like a bad thing that manga has come in to take that that place not at all my wall is my wall is full of weebery okay i met why i met my wife 16 years ago in you know cosplaying a naruto character uh, when i say that i'm not specialized in in geekdom i am very broad in geekdom okay i cosplay i play video games i play dnd i do writing I do, I do there's a lot of things so i dabble in a lot of geek hemispheres and i can tell you that anime is very dear to me anime is very dear to me i think it's incredible it's in fact i hold one piece outside of tolkien's works as the greatest work of fiction that there is so yes i hold anime in a high regard but but a part of me is always sad when i see characters that i grew up with before i even knew about manga characters such as spider-man the x-men dr doom when i see the sad shape that american comics are in and i know i'm not unique in that i'm not and, and, but Eric July has been saying for a while, he has been saying for a while now that he planned to do something that a lot of naysayers, a lot of naysayers have been wanting to shit on him before even letting the man try. Okay. See, Eric launched yesterday, Ripa verse comics. Okay. He launched it. And this is a comic book company for comic book readers. And as of recording, as of recording, the campaign for ISOM number one, their their uh, launch, their their what their their initial launch has had a goal of one hundred thousand dollars. Okay, a hundred thousand dollars, and has already reached over one million dollars. This is insane. Okay, this is insane because first off, this isn't crowdfunded. All right, this, these, these books are already printed. Eric fronted his own money to launch this comic book company. And that alone is so impressive. But take further into account what this Ripaverse is and why for me, this is not only a great thing. It's not only just a great thing. It's a necessity. There needs to be a paradigm shift here in the States. For too long, 
Marvel and DC have treated characters that were once beloved, once cherished, as nothing more than rebootable, mantle-passing garbage. That's the truth. Right? Worse, worse. They treat you, the readers, as if your dollar is owed to them. You owe them. You got to give us the money because we're Marvel. You have to give us this. We're Disney. And it's such bullshit. I'll be completely frank. The quality of the writing of the artwork many times, even the artwork, all of it has gone downhill. And there has been need of a shakeup. Their new blood needs to rise up and open people's eyes to other forms of entertainment within this printed media. Okay? And I want to touch on the three tenets of the code of ethics that Eric July has written for the Ripperverse and why it resonates so much with me. Okay, first, respect the, ca the customer. All right, and I want to zoom in on here. Respect the customer. And this is such a key reason as to why the American comic book industry is in the pathetic state that it is in. All right, for so long, the big two, Marvel and DC, they haven't written stories for the characters or for the customers. They have written stories about for themselves. And the reason being is they don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about people asking them to stop butchering their beloved characters. They're writing stories for themselves. Sales be damned and they're not selling. So they really are damned. Okay. They're writing for beating you over the head with on the nose agenda focused narratives that people don't want in their entertainment. A lot of people use these mediums to escape the shittiness of reality and they don't need the big two fucking forcing it down their throat. But it says it here in part one that the Ripperverse comics knows it is not entitled to your money. And Eric July plans to earn it with good storytelling. That is, it's so, it's so key for that to already be something that they know and understand, okay? Because it's easy for him to just turn around and be like, yeah, I'm, I, you know, he has a sizable audience. He's got almost 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. He hasn't been doing this for a short while. He could easily coast on being like, I'm just going to ride on the popularity I've already established. No, no, no. He knows that to keep this project going, they got to keep putting the work in. And I'm glad to see that being touched upon here. Number two, which is huge for me, is canon and continuity. Okay. You all know how much I constantly harp on something in the, in, in the MCU and how they're destroying established lore. Canon is important. Okay. It's why Kenobi was so fucking terrible. Well, one of the many reasons why Kenobi was so fucking terrible. Because it ruined the canon. Okay? And, yet, and I cannot emphasize enough how much I love that sentence right there. Let me, let me bring that back up. This sentence right here. There will be no lazy time travel to change histories or events. There will be no cheap multiverses that have altered versions of the same character okay thank god because i'm so tired of it i said it before but time travel generally sucks most writers have no idea how to handle it okay they 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 go with the branch line and usually once people start doing the branch theory of time travel it's it's you can tell it's going to be lazy and Look how badly the Multiverse of Madness treated characters like Reed Richards and Professor X. And, and what was one of the immediate responses that defenders of that movie threw out immediately? Oh, well, it's just an alternate version of them, so they won't necessarily be that weak in the MCU. Stop it. Stop making excuses for these companies. For fuck's sake, they can't even keep track of their own multiverse numbering anymore, okay? They kept calling it the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they kept calling the Marvel Cinematic Universe Earth 616 when it has already been established that it is Earth 199,999. The Earth 616 is the main continuity of the comics, which the MCU is not. All right? That's the problem 
when you have fans who don't fucking understand what canon is and how important it is to keep it in place. And if you establish, if you establish that event C happened because of event A and B, you need to keep it that way. You can't just say, oh, and by the way, event D also happened between event A and B because people go, but wait a minute. If event D happened, then how come they didn't do this in event B? You can't play around with continuity. You have to treat it. It's, it's you have to treat it sacred, like it's sacred. For fuck's sake, man. These stories, and that's how stories are told. You need to keep it told coherently. All right. And that brings us to the last point because it, this does touch upon continuity and canon and the sort. And this brings me to the last point of the, the uh, ethics a comprehensive timeline. This is super crucial. Okay. There are times when reboots are needed. Even here, Eric says they promise to try to keep reboots to a minimum. Look, and, and, and I can, oh, Jose, but what about content? Look, there are characters like Superman. Superman has almost 100 years of history with dozens, and I do mean dozens, of writers working there and artists who have had a hand in his lore, it gets convoluted really fast, okay? Again, let me reemphasize that. Imagine to yourself, you're not, you, you have to remember this character Superman came out 1938. We are in 2022. That is almost a century ago. It is far closer to a century than it is now. You're going to say it's what? What is that? 16 years from now? It'll be a, a cent less than 16 years? That's fucking 84 years this character has been around, guys. Okay? I'm sorry if the math is wrong. I'm doing it off the top of my head. Or I hope it's right. Um, but it's 84 years. I'm pretty sure it is. This fucking character has a lot of history, and it's easy for that to get convoluted. And sometimes you do need to hit that reset button i agree very much that it should be kept to a minimum very rarely done but yes there are times when you meet you may need to say okay we're going to restart a character who has such an expansive history as superman not create an alternate not pass the mantle not drastically alter the character but say hey it's nearly impossible for fans of this character to go back and absorb a near century's worth of lore so i appreciate that eric is addressing that hey if the Ripperverse is around for another 50 or 60 years, shit, we may have to reboot a character here or there, but we will do our best to keep it to a minimum. I, I appreciate the realistic take on it. And again, this is coming from him, who is infinitely more knowledgeable about comics than I am. Far, far more, okay? And I will always tell you that your time is precious. Always try to remind all of you of that, because it is. It is. And, I, and you know, people, oh, time. There's a lot of things that are precious. Yes, you know, your family, all that stuff. I'm not saying that time is the only, what I mean to say is that when, when I try to write reviews about movies and stuff like that, and I tell you, don't go watch this piece of shit, it's because you're not going to get those two hours back. You can spend that two hours with someone you love. You can spend that two hours watching something else that might be entertaining. You can watch it scratching your ass. Scratching your ass sometimes might be more entertaining than watching Love and Thunder. It really is. I can tell you that. And, and I, Tell you also to vote with your wallets. And I have already done that. I've done that. I am proud to say that I've been following this Ripperverse project for a long time. I've rated him on twitch.tv slash NYC Geek, shameless plug. I've, I've rated him. I've watched his content for a while. And on July 11th, when this campaign launched, I already have my read and collect bundle set aside. I got mine because I wanted one that he signed. I want the one that I can, you know, and keep that one bagged and boarded. And then have one for myself that I can take out and read. Maybe I'll, you know, we'll discuss it on the stream or make a video of it here. I'd love to do that. Um, I would ask his permission if, if, if that's all right. Um, and I cannot wait to know more about Isom and, and, and like this character here as well. Hold on. Let me, I, I want to show you this other character because she looks fucking badass. Yaira, 
Gyra, she looks fucking great. Hold on, look at this picture right here. I love, she looks like she's gonna be a badass. I wanna know what her powers are right here. I summon her seem to be like duking it out. I wanna, I love this blue right here. Oh, this looks fucking great. I wanna know more about her. I love comics. I do, I do. I'm, I, I tell you, I grew up, I didn't grow up with much and my parents always tried to give me what they didn't have. And one of the things that they always tried to do was they tried to, you know, give me comics, could afford to buy an issue here or there. And I always remember, you know, my dad, especially my dad, you know, he would read it too. He, I would read it and then he would read a little bit of it because he grew up not having any of that. My mom, even my mom, my mom and me, she watched when I was growing up, she watched the X-Men animated series with me because they loved those characters too. They just never could, they never had the money to, you know, growing up to buy it themselves. So they wanted to, um, you know, live, you know, give me that and also enjoy it themselves. And so comics to me is a very near, dear thing to me, Espe especially characters like Spider-Man. I can remember my parents giving me that. Um, I can't remember the, it was like a, um, the spy, it was, it was basically when Spider-Man was getting married to MJ, um, to Mary Jane. And it was a big comic book. It was a big, like graphic novel. It was like, like fucking like the big spine one. It was this one, the wedding. And I remember being like a thick, it was like an, like a collection of it. And I remember so much reading that thing to the point where like the spine was busted down. And I'm always grateful for my parents to have tried to put that love into me. And I'm so happy to see someone passionate about this industry, trying to revitalize it. Okay. And, and also just as importantly, this will help other indie comic book creators get exposure too. Okay. There are tons of talented artists and writers out there who have their own projects that are often overshadowed by the big two. And I truly think that the massive, massive exposure of the Ripperverse is going to help shine a light on other indie developers. I do. And, and Eric has said it often enough that he's not trying to dominate this industry. That's not what he's trying to do. He's, he is trying to provide an alternate source of entertainment, a, another outlet for fellow comic book readers. And a lot of people, once they step outside of their regular comfort zone of Marvel and DC, they're going to see that there are other providers of entertainment out there. That's me. Because, uh, and, and again, and I was reading comics to me when comics were still fucking great. And I started seeing manga here and there and being like, oh shit, what is this? And that opened up my eyes. So, oh my God, there is another source of fucking amazing writing out there. And, you know, sometimes what you need is a big enough wave to rock the boat. And the Ripperverse launching is that wave. And, and in the case of Marvel in DC, I hope that they finally come to realize that their boat is taking on water and sinking because their recent work for the past decade has sucked. Since like 2011, 2010-ish, especially when they started introducing characters like Miles Morales and, you know, female Thor and whatnot. <laughs> just, that sucked. I wish Eric July absolute best in his Ripperverse project and i'm excited to get my bundle later this year right i can't wait i can't wait anyway this has been the nyc geek if you enjoyed this content please make sure to hit that subscribe button hit it right now right freaking now unless you're subscribed instead consider hitting that like that share button hit that freaking bell so you know when when the videos go live because ding the dong do all that stuff do all that stuff because god knows youtube They'll, unsub, they'll unsub you. They'll not send out notifications. Anything that you can do to help will help. Uh, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. Are you excited about the Ripperverse? Have you heard about the Ripperverse before? If you haven't, are you looking into it? Tell me what your thoughts are. I'm like, as you can clearly see, I made this video because I am excited about it. I hope you are too. And I hope I was able to tell you a little bit more about something if you haven't already heard about it. And if you haven't, please make sure to follow me over on twitch.tv slash NYC geek, where I stream regularly on Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. And this Friday will be a very special stream because it will be my one year anniversary of streaming on Twitch. So 
So there will be a lot of uh, a lot of stuff happening over on the stream anniversary over there. But also follow me on the disgusting cesspool that is Twitter. Please go live your life on Twitter. It's gross out there, right? Remember always, I said it earlier in this video. I'll say it again. Your time is precious. I thank you for sharing it with me. I truly do. Please stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll see you guys next time.